Hello and welcome back to All About The Cars, the series where I've been throwing virtual production cars around the Norschleife to see, well, how the developers think they should drive. This week's choice of cars is the Alfa Romeo 4C, very nice car indeed, and the Jaguar XFRS, so a little large as far as cars go. The Alfa 4C was chosen mainly because... We did the Lotus Exige on a set of Corsa, and I thought it was about time to get some similar cars on two different games to see how we were doing time-wise, to see if there was going to be a, a big difference between the two. So that's the choice for that one. And the Jag, because, well, it's a Jag. Also, it's a giant sports saloon kind of thing, like an M3, but I thought an M3 was a bit predictable. Hmm. Anyway, Alpha 4C first. And isn't she a looker? I certainly think so. Very nice. One thing caught me by surprise, though, when setting up to drive this this thing. One, flappy paddle gearbox. Really? It's a small sports car. H-pattern six-speed. Surely. No, no. Flappy paddle gearbox. Okay. All right, makes it easier for me setting up and everything. Just not as much fun. The second surprise was it has ABS. And traction control. ABS, I can kind of... Okay, right. Modern day safety, yeah. Traction control on a small car like this? I mean, we've got, what, 240 horsepower? It's not that big. But, yeah, it's there anyway. So, we got the traction control on. We got the ABS on. Let's go driving. And we are off. No tire squeal. No swathes of smoke. We've got traction control here. So we're going to make use of it. Now, heading down to this first section where we start testing the agility of the car, we expect this car to do very well. And to be honest, it does. It, do it does a great job. I've got to say, looking at the car on track, this is really the first time I've sat and looked at it on the track itself. Um, and it does look good. It looks great. I just wish I was a fan of its engine note doesn't do it for me doesn't do it for me but yeah as we can see handled the agility section quite well nothing stands out really good grip really good low center of gravity which is important interior we're here um, yeah no, it's pretty nice it's a good place to be fair amount of plastic but then to be fair this isn't you know like a hundred thousand pound sports car or anything like that Dashboard though is very nice, so it's got style. I like it. I like it. It's a good place to be. I could get used to it. <laughs> if I'm honest, I could get used to it. If I want to donate you, that's fine. Going through the long left over the crest and the back's trying to step out a little bit. Um, it happens again over curbs. I think it happens on the exit of this corner. Let me just check. Yeah, coming on the exit. Yeah, there we go. Back end hanging out a little bit. Doesn't like curbs, doesn't like being unsettled, doesn't like braking. If I have to question this car's handling, it's on the brakes. Coming out of corners, it's actually really, really good. Whether that's the traction control, or just its native grip. I actually suspect it's the native grip, because it didn't feel like the traction control was kicking in. But brakes and lifting off, you get this, where the back's stepping out, and you're trying to catch it. So it can get really interesting when you're on the brakes. It kind of over-rotates and pulls you off in places that you're not wanting to necessarily be. And it's why this run was actually the faster of the runs, if you see what I mean. Uh, I was c got used to the handling a little bit more in this one. But it was a 10 second jump from the other two runs to this one. It's very, very tricky getting used to that braking and turning a bit wide there on exit but yeah we'll get over it we'll get over it so as we now head into carousel it's a small sports car i'm not sensing any issues i'm not expecting any no we're all good we're all good nice neat tidy brilliant now top of the track this is where i'm kind of expecting We've got a bit of understeer there, as the front started sliding instead. I was expecting the back to be wanting to step out a little bit. A little bit in the, on that se second corner there. 
Over the jump? No jump. Ah, it's Forza, to be honest. It doesn't seem to have the changes in elevation. And also, we're having to get on the brakes before the jump. It's a real shame there. Later on the lap, we're going around the final long corner. we got another crest coming up. Bit of, yeah, a bit more lift off oversteer. So we're just having to ease off the throttle to get it onto the straight. We get massive amounts of tire squeal. However, it's not shabby on the top end. 153. Not the fastest by any means. Certainly by no means the slowest. Oh, hell no. So, no, it's been a pretty good car. On the brakes through here. A little bit of trouble there. A bit of wiggling. Back doesn't seem to slow at the same rate that the front does. So, yeah, well, not a lot we can do about that. Heading across the line, though. Hmm, respectable time. Respectable time. How fast? Eh. We'll show you that in a bit. We've got a Jaguar to test first. And here we are. So, big old blue Jag. Uh, it's got over twice the horsepower of our little Alpha. It's also incredibly heavy compared to our little Alpha. So it should be an interesting match. Definitely faster and straight line. Slower in the bends. It's also a lot bigger. So, fingers crossed, more stable. Now, it's got the same flappy paddle gearbox. So, no difference there. And it's got all the assists. After all, it is a Jaguar, and you would expect such a thing. So we've got the traction control, stability management, and ABS. So everything is on. Everything is going to be fast. Let's do this. Off the line. No wheel spin at all. Nice and easy. Now, I've got to say, I'm not sure I like the engine note or not. I was expecting something a bit deeper. But, hmm. as for hmm, its weight, to be fair, it carries it pretty well. It's not too bad in the corners. You you, you got some understeer there going, I'll, I'll be honest. does plough a little bit, but it, it's predictable. So you turn in a little earlier than you would in the Alpha, and you, you don't do too badly. Obviously, not quite as light, not quite as grippy. But then having said that, much quicker in a straight line much quicker let's have a quick look at this interior and yeah this is this is more like it you know it's a jag after all although to be fair it's a jag doing some weight saving so it's a little bit more spartan than say you know your standard xf but i i i i, I think you can get to like this you know it's it's still a pleasant place to be Let's see how we do with the next high-speed left-hander. It's just coming up now. So, let's throw it in. And didn't want to grip initially. But once it did set, it's gone through quite nicely. Brakes. I must admit, the brakes in this are fantastic. That is one thing about this car I definitely could not have it complained about. And neither was actually the traction. Possibly helped by the traction control. Like I say, I don't have the HUD on, so I don't know how much it's working away. But it does very well. And even in the slower speed stuff like this, it, it, it kind of, the weight is misleading. You don't feel it so much when you're actually driving it, although it's still a factor uh, as we go along. Going around these this sort of corner, it kind of struggles a bit. Kind of constant radius, it doesn't have enough grip for that, but the slow speed stuff does very well at indeed. So for instance, this section, not too bad. Drives out of it very well, I can tell you that much. Still not a fan of that engine note. Going up the hill, we got 550 horsepower. It did the hill fine. I mean, seriously, it just did the hill fine. Um, Alright, not totally fine. We actually were going through there a bit faster than I expected. We got a bit of understeer there, so I got on the grass. That made things a little messy. Cost us some time. How about the carousel? Uh, now, it's going to look absolutely fine taking here. I can tell you from the first two runs, it doesn't take the carousel well. Going through there, probably slower than the Alpha. I don't know the exact speeds, but I was having to be so careful because any touch of the throttle, it just immensely popped out that dip. Going through here, you can kind of see what I mean. You kind of turn it a bit early, and then kind of once it's started to actually rotate then you can kind of 
wind back on the old steering and, and carry the speed through. The jump, I'm uh, not expecting much here because it's a big heavy car. You brake early. So, yeah, no, no, nothing spectacular there. Like I say, because of that weight, it does understeer, but by the time you've done, you know, half a lap, you're, you're pretty much used to it. I say that understeering wide on the exit here. Going on to the main straight, though, and trust me, you do get to fly down that straight. Top speed? Only 182 miles an hour. <laughs> Only doing 30 miles an hour more than the Alpha. But is that much extra speed down the straight going to make up for... Let's be honest, the bulk. It's got to make up a lot of time going around these here corners. Did it make up enough? Well, as it turns out, not quite. Only a second or so behind, though. Which does show that, you know, this is a big car. Lots of power could keep up with a small car with lots of grip. Though, to be fair, the smaller car possibly underpowered, but very close. Very close. So, it does let everything excel quite nicely. Also, interestingly, fractions different between probably the Assetto Corsa and force of versions because notice how the Lotus Exige only half a second off of the Alpha not bad anyway that's enough for today thank you so much for joining me we'll see you next week <laughs>